In this video, we are going to deep dive into the contents of asset side of the balance sheet of Reliance Industries Limited. We saw in the previous video that the asset side has non-current assets and current assets. The liabilities side has uh, non-current liabilities and current liabilities. In this video, we are going to look at only the asset side and deep dive into uh, some of the uh, items. Now let's go to property, plant and equipment. So when you scroll down in the annual report, uh, you will go to note number one, which gives you details of what property, what plant, equipment, work in progress, intangible assets, what are all these things. And here you have a, a list. In the list, you'll see three broad sections. You have something called gross block. You have a depreciation. You have net block. What does this mean? Now, we have own assets. We have leased assets. The uh, property, plant and equipment, uh, this is the tangible assets that you have and you have the intangible assets. So it's a two by three metrics in a way. For the tangible assets, you've been given different types of uh, lands. Again, there are some uh, different items, leasehold, freehold land, don't worry about those. We need to keep things simple for this course by you know, just understanding the contents, being able to read it. And then we can go to you know, some advanced things later in the course. So you have a gross block, which really means the cost at which you purchase a given asset. Okay. And then there is something called a reduction in the value of the asset over a period of time because you use it. The asset has, you know, wear and tear or the market value goes down. Uh, so for different reasons, the value of an asset goes down. And then you have a final net number. So that's how this table is arranged. And they tell you the cost of uh, the land which was purchased during the year or even before that year. And then you have the depreciation on that land during the year and the final number which is shown in the balance sheet. Okay, understand that, you know, there are again one, two, three, four different columns within that. But the underlying principle is, is this, that an asset which is uh, purchased, an asset which is purchased has a long term life. Let's say this is an asset and this has long term life. Okay, long term, long term life simply means that it is going to help you generate revenue every year, year on year for, for a few years. Now, what is going to happen every year is, so this is, let's say, financial year one, and this is the value of the asset. During this first year, you use this asset to generate revenue. And, you know, let's say you just for representation purposes, you use this much part of the asset. Next year, you have only this much asset available to be used. And then in financial year, uh, financial year two, you use again a certain part of the asset towards generating revenue and then in the following year you have only this much so this is you know this component this component is what is called depreciation and we'll again you know talk more discuss more when we move along in the course so all we want to uh, you know understand from this note one in the annual report of ril is that there is a gross block which which means in the beginning i had this much and then depreciation is given in the second block which is this amount plus this amount total depreciation and finally this is the net amount which is being shown in the last column and hence in the balance sheet okay let's go back to the balance sheet the next item i want to look at is uh, investments where all has the Reliance Industries Limited invested the money. So when you uh, go there, so when you click on, uh, so under the investments, you have 
note number two and this note shows you uh, details of investments and mind you this this was a long list this ran into multiple pages if you have the annual report with you right now you would see there are so many different types of investments that this company has done in different investment options you have uh, preference shares of associate company debentures of other companies government securities equity shares of other companies, joint venture companies. Again, you know, there is some advanced terminology here. I don't want to get into that. But what we need to understand is that uh, Reliance Industries Limited has invested their money in, you know, government schemes or uh, in other companies. So that's possible for any artificial legal uh, person, a company uh, to do. So there you go. Uh, this is the investments. Um, uh, details of investments of Reliance Industries. We can also look at the details of loans here. The loans are uh, non-current loans. So uh, there are unsecured and uh, considered good. Unsecured basically means, uh, so there are two categories of loans. There is secured and there is unsecured. Okay. Now these are the assets we are talking about. So loans given to, let's say employees, for example, secured means that there is collateral. Collateral meaning uh, if the employee does not pay back the loan, uh, you can sell off his property. You have the paperwork for that and legal process has been done. Unsecured means that there is no security. There is no collateral. In case the loan does not come back to the Reliance Industries Limited, it cannot do anything. It cannot recover that amount. All right. So just a couple of uh, terminologies which I thought I can clarify. Um, so the investments again deposits with related parties. Again, related parties are associate companies of Reliance Industries, and Reliance has you know uh, hundreds of companies under its wing. So it's very complex company, and possibly I've taken the largest company uh, in India. So uh, it's very complicated in that sense. Then you have other loans and advances. So, you know, some details are given here. Uh, sometimes these are obvious. Sometimes you have to further look through the financial uh, report, the annual report to understand, okay, what is this and that, right? Okay. Let's go to next item, which is uh, other non-current assets. Other non-current assets include uh, capital advances. These the advances, again, are, you know, money which has been given to either vendors or you know, different parties that you deal with. Any advance income tax which has been deposited, you know, you and me also file income tax refund, you expect that money to come back to you. So, you know, that kind of thing is uh, true for the companies as well. And, you know, some other uh, details uh, as well. Next up, you have inventories, the stock of unsold group, uh, goods. What does it include? It has raw material it has work in progress finished goods the stock which is you know in the in the trade ready to be sold uh, and some other stores and you know spare parts and so on so we have details of uh, uh, all of the stocks so for any any company all these details will be available uh, on their uh, annual report uh, let's look at the investments Again, current investments, we've looked at non-current investments before. So the current investments, again, uh, you know, this was a long list. I just cropped a, a part of it and I'm showing it here. So the, the Reliance Industries had invested in different investment uh, avenues. Again, government funds, uh, private uh, schemes, other companies and so on. So. Uh, the idea is that, uh, you know, there can be hundreds of transactions, thousands of transactions, different kinds of items, but they are going to be categorized under the same four heads, asset, liability, income, expenses. And within these, there can be subcategories, but, you know, you'll be familiar with all of uh, those. So, uh, yeah, right. So I have gone through all the uh, details which I wanted to. You can, you know, feel free to browse through the rest of notes as well in the annual report and uh, you know you should get uh, most of it in at least in terms of at the surface level what are assets liabilities how are these numbers arrived at is something which we have to learn in this course as well 
so that you can make sense of uh, the data which is presented. Right now, we're only looking at the left hand side, the concepts, the terms which are being used. And as we move forward, we're going to look at these numbers, how these numbers are arrived at. All right, I'll stop here. In the next video, we're going to talk about the liabilities side of the balance sheet.